joy, somebody. Give him another shout of praise. Look, put your hands like this. All God's people, are you ready? Come on, let's watch your Oh, no. 
Hallelujah. Can you please celebrate Jesus one more time? Hallelujah. Is somebody excited to be here this morning? I want you to say to your neighbor, the Lord is my rock. The Lord is my rock. Hallelujah. You can please have your seat like queens and kings in the presence of God. It's good to have you here this beautiful Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Amen. We are so, so excited to have you this morning. It's always, always a great time to gather in the presence of God. But one thing is sure, you will exchange your weakness with your strength this morning. You will live here blessed. You will live here full of God. You will live here full of wisdom. You will live here full of strength in the mighty name of Jesus. A couple of announcements. Please don't forget our next level prayer continues tomorrow. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited? Hallelujah. Next level prayer is a global movement. It's a platform that God is using to touch life, to change stories for good. Hallelujah. Stories that doctors have said nothing can be done. In next level prayer, those stories have been turned into testimonies. And it's been happening all over from Monday to Friday. So if you have some time, please go out of your way to share the link. Invite your friend. It's always, always a great time to pray together. And I can assure you that something miraculous always happens on next level prayer. We call it the last bus stop. Is somebody excited about that? Hallelujah. Please don't forget that next level prayer conference is happening on the 1st of July in London. Hallelujah. Is somebody excited about that? We are taking the testimony of Jesus to the city of London. How many of us are going to be there? Can I see your hands up? Even if you're not going to be there, at least you're inviting five people to be there. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I know some of you have families in London, in UK, in every, all part of Europe. Please go out of your way to invite them. We would like to receive them. We would like to worship with them. It's going to be a time of renewal. God will show up like never before. I can assure you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very first and most likely the only Father's Day is happening next week, Sunday. Hallelujah. You know, we may have about 10 or more Mother's Day, right? But at least next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating all the, more, all the fathers in the house. Please come prepared. Bring a man to church. But please don't take him to the altar. Just bring him to church. Is that okay? Hallelujah. So go out of your way to invite the men in your life, your father, your, you know, friends around the world. Please bring them. Let's celebrate the men. These men, they fought for us. They labor for us. They do everything for us. It's a good time to celebrate them. And the next gen is going to be here as well to minister to the fathers. It's going to be really good. Hallelujah. Finally, we have our growth track that is happening immediately after the service. Growth track, for me, growth track is, is the open door. If you want to know more about harvesters, if you want to be part of this family, then growth track is for you. Growth track is where you get to learn more about your purpose in Christ. Where you get to learn more about leadership, how to discover your gift and use your gift for the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, Groot, I would like to ask that if you are here and you are new in church, then you would like to join Groot Track. Groot Track is for you. It's designed for everyone that has been in church for two months, three months, five months, or even one year. And you have no relationship with anybody in church. We would like to ask that you please join the Groot Track. Hallelujah. Finally, do we happen to have testimony? Can I see your hands up? Anybody here? If you would like to testify of God's goodness, you must understand that the miracle belongs to you, but the testimony belongs to God. Because God uses those testimonies to tell other people what is available. Do we have people here that have testimonies? Hallelujah. It's a good time to go into worship, and I want you to please sit back and just focus on God this morning. As we worship God in truth and in spirit, allow him to speak to you in a new dimension. God bless you.
you are sent in his presence at all the
Supernatural Father, we worship you, we give you praise this morning. Can somebody please lift their hands and lift their voices to God this morning as we pray in the spirit? Somebody lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody lift your voice and pray in the Spirit. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't see you. Somebody lift your voice towards heaven. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hey, Shantaya. In Jesus' name. This morning we want to start out praying by thanking God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. I want to ask that you please get out your phones, your Bibles, wherever, whatever device you have your Bible in, and so that you can read with me and pray with me. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, the Amplified Version says, For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you. Come on, put your hands on your stomach and your chest and say, God is effectively at work in me. Oh yes, it says, both to will and to work that is strengthening and energizing and creating in you the longing ability to fulfill purpose uh, for his good pleasure. Uh, this morning you're going to lift your hands uh, and you're going to say, my father, my father, uh, I thank you uh, that you are at work in me, uh, both to will uh, and to do of your good pleasure. Uh, can you lift your voice and pray this morning? Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 71 verse 12, it says, Oh God, don't stay away, my God. He says, please hurry up and help me. Hallelujah. This morning, I don't know if there's anybody who needs the help of God. I don't know if there's anybody who is trusting God for help in one area or the other in their life. Can you take a few moments and think, in what area do you need the help of God? Because we're about to pray in that particular area. The Bible says concerning Uzziah, that he was greatly and marvelously helped until he became exceedingly great. You are going to declare this morning that in this area, in your health, in your finances, in your job, in your career, you receive the help of God this morning. In the name of Jesus, can somebody lift their voice and begin to pray? I receive the help of God. I receive great and marvelous help. Hey! Help from above. Help from above. I receive help. I receive help. I receive help. In the name of Jesus. 
He says, once have you spoken, twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. In Jesus' name. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, uh, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, uh, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. Uh, you are going to pray this morning, uh, My father, my father, uh, uh, foolishness will not look like wisdom to me. Foolishness will not look like wisdom to me. In the name of Jesus, uh, the path of destruction, uh, I will not follow. Uh, the path of destruction, uh, I will not go near it. Uh, by the power of the Spirit, uh, my feet uh, are ordered uh, into the right places, uh, into the right discussions, uh, into the right meetings, uh, into the right avenues. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, can you make that your prayer this morning? <laughs> In Jesus' name, we are going to pray that prayer one more time. Listen, there are career limiting mistakes. Mistakes that you make that seem to limit your career forever. Mistakes that you make that seem to limit your business forever. You are going to declare that that will not be your experience. Huh? That in the name of Jesus, huh? foolishness will not look like wisdom to you. In the name of Jesus, can you lift your voice and begin to pray this morning? <laughs> In Jesus' name. Lastly, Joshua 24, 24. The people said to Joshua, he says, we will serve the Lord your God. And we will listen and obey his voice. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And they know it. Oh, my father, my father. That I will not miss it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I dedicate my heart to you. I yield myself to you. That I may not miss it. In the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your voice and make that your prayer this morning? In Jesus' name. Just before we go, I want to say a word of prayer. If you are here in this place, you know, as we pray this prayer, and say, Lord, we yield ourselves to you. You can't pray that kind of prayer. Because you know that your relationship with God is not even right. You know that you are not in a place where you can confidently say that I am in a strong relationship with Jesus. Whether you're watching us at home or you're right here in the auditorium. If God is not the Lord of your life, you have not made Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. If you die now, you're not sure you'll make heaven. Anywhere you are, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Please lift up your right hands wherever you are because we're going to say a word of prayer together. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sisters. The ushers are going around. They will put a card in your hands as you do that. If you are joining us at home, I want you to please raise your right hand as well. Wherever you are. Because this morning, God is coming into your life and things are changing for you forever. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. God bless you. God bless you for doing that. If you have your hands lifted up, whether at home or in the auditorium, put those hands on your chest this morning. Put those hands on your chest and let's say this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to know you. I believe in my heart that you died for me. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. Today, I am born again. All things have passed away. All things have become new. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. 
If you made that prayer this morning, listen, congratulations. The hand of God is upon you. The grace of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, let's lift up our hands as we worship God a bit further this morning. Come on, go ahead and lift your hands, lift your voice. The presence of God is in this place. As we worship, worship with us. As we lift our hands, lift your hands with us. Because the presence of God is in this place. Glory to God.
17 says, as Jesus began to teach, he says, the power of God was present to heal. We want to pray for NLP conference in the UK as we gather July the 1st that the power of God will be present to heal. That nobody that attends that meeting will return the same way they came. That the power of God, I wanted to intercede. I wanted to stand in the gap. Maybe you are inviting a friend that has cancer. Maybe you are inviting someone that has some kind of delay. That the same power of God that stopped in Christ will be manifested. He says in the book of Revelation chapter 3, he says, he says, I will open before you an open door and no man will be able to shut it. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. That the power of God. transformation there will be elevation there will be encounters of the spirit in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord hallelujah that hallelujah can be better praise the lord we can do just one more time better praise the lord 
Please, you can have your seat. Praise God. Praise God. Please, you can have your seat. Why I'm, why I'm doing this, if you have a testimony, will you please raise up your right hand? If you have a testimony, our church is always full of testimonies because God is answering the prayers and doing it incredibly wonderful and just beyond is always blowing our mind so if you have testimony just raise your hand above your head something that happened with your relationship something that happened with your finance something that happened with your job something that happened just raise your hand above your head the ushers will give you a card you know raise your hand above your head and why they give me a card you can feel the testimony in there and um we can have the opportunity to share it either by you know by video or maybe in a subsequent service you can come and go ahead and share it yourself. So if you have a testimony, just raise up your hand. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Ushers, can you be willing to give out all of these cards at this time? You know, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Just keep your hands raised up high a little so that the ushers can come to you. While we're doing that, and uh, if, they don't, if they don't come to you, just keep putting it up there like that. You can put it down and then raise it up again and say, I'm here, ushers. You know, you've not given me a card. Praise the Lord. Um, three, three good announcements. Where? Oh, wow. Well, um, I... For all of you that in the live center, all those, all those online, I'm sure those online can view, right? Am, am I right? Okay, so those online, I'm sure that you can view. You don't know something is wrong. But for those in the live centers, the main screens have just kind of gone off and uh, the media team are really working on it. If you notice something for the past few weeks, we've been, uh, it's just been working on it and working on it and working on it. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's gone off and they're going to, I hope that before the, service is over they will be able to put it back up glory to god so but that's great because that means all of you have to pay attention physically to me and you don't have to look at the screen which is something that uh, it could be challenging if you're used to looking at big images on the screen glory to god hallelujah so if you're between the if you're over 20 years old and you want to do an internship we're offering an internship opportunity an internship opportunity what is internship it's a ministry internship some of you you have a heart to serve God. Maybe you're a student, or maybe you've just finished university, or maybe you're a copper, or maybe you're even working, or you're trying to get a job, and you, you have a heart to serve God. There's an internship where you where you get to serve in the ministry. It's a, it's a full-time internship. That means you come three to four times. You come three to four times in a, in a week. You get to learn skills. So in your internship, you pick something. You can say, I want to learn social justice. Social justice means... I want to pick a cause to help people. I want to help the poor. I want to help, um, what they call it, rape victims. And we're training in that area. It can also be, um, it can also be, um, so that's pastoral. You can pick social justice and do pastoral. Pastoral says, I want to develop myself for ministry. I feel a call. I don't know what to do. I want to develop myself for ministry. The third part also is, um, um, it's, um, it's music. It's, you know, I, I want to learn how to do music on a large scale. So we have an internship. It's a paid internship. That means that when you come, you know, every month, I think you get a stipend of maybe thirty to 50000 I'm not sure exactly. So the internship is going to start, and I think that as a lot of people, in fact, you'll be surprised. We got, I got someone from the U.S. that said he's willing, you know, why person is I'm willing to come to Nigeria and just stay for six months for the internship. So it's going to be good because you meet. The reason why you should do this is that when you are in the, in the younger ages, learning is something you must embrace. So it's a big opportunity. If you want to grow, internship will grow you. So it's, it will grow you. So if you want to do that, um, if you want to do that, there's a number that's on the screen. And um, we'll put a post online and you can respond to the post. There's a number, there's an email. Please, can you also give us an email address so that it will be easy to send information on the internship. And the second thing is that our business acceleration course is this coming Friday and Saturday. Someone say praise the Lord. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited because, um, you know, I'm excited because after the course, the stories we're going to hear will be beautiful. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful stories of like my like business was doing 5 million per annum. Now we're doing um, 25 million per annum. You know, my business was doing 100 million per annum. And the reason why is that we have all this very strategic leaders from your Miyamoboko. Your Miyamoboko built a company that was sold eventually for about $60 million dollars. You know, if you see the Enyo filling station, he was the one that founded and sold it off. At some point, I moved to another business. We're having the richest black woman in the world, Mrs. Falon Shalakija, also been there. Mrs. Falon Shalakija, sharing our story. So just a lot of people, just a lot of people sharing within our church, outside of our church, sharing our story. I will be available to share some stories, you know, and just to really challenge you. So if you've not gotten involved in the business acceleration course, 
today, today, today. Go to the stand outside and register. You know what? I just think you should register. And some of you that feel that safe is, if, if it's a waste of time, can I make you a promise? I will refund your money. To show how much I need to change your life. If it's a waste of time, it will be the most impactful business course you have ever done so far. Onomzi, go outside there and register. And you've not been in church for one month. Why are you doing that to Jesus Christ? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, 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 Mr. Labimuyi, have you registered already? You registered already, exactly. And she has this huge, um, you know, trading business. It's amazing, you know. Um, I, you have people that are doing 50 million per annum at the, that register. So if you're doing less than that, you should just force yourself to be there. And it's a paid program. You also get to meet people. There's also an opportunity to meet other people that want to invest into your business. So even for the investment, that's a good thing. Um, I got a call from someone from the UK yesterday and said, I'm interested in giving some money to people that want their business to expand. How can I do it through the entrepreneurs um, program? Praise the Lord. So it's 9 a.m. It's not holding. It's not a church program. So it's holding a landmark. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Food, lunch will be provided in between. Very good food. So just for you to know. And that's why some of the reason why it's very costly. So when we say we're charging for it, it's not because we need the money. It's the fact that just using landmark alone is a lot of money. Now the feeding everybody a proper meal is also a lot of money. And the last, com and the last announcement is, um, is NLP UK, which is holding in 21 days time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just in case you don't know, every 8 p.m. on YouTube, we begin to pray. Every 8 p.m. we're praying for about 15 to 30 minutes. And um, all of you that have not invited your friends to come, please get them to come. Get them to come. We have cards for people that want to invite their friends. Some of you here are going with us, and we're excited to see that you're going. Some of our choir members, you know, will be, will be ministering, and it will be wonderful. Saturday and Sunday will be very powerful. I've gotten calls from people from different parts of the country, of, of the world. I got a call from someone from the U.S. yesterday. I just want to let you know that I've seen my tickets. I'm coming, you know, from the U.S. I've gotten calls from people from in France and Sweden, you know, just all coming for the conference. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if you know someone, you know, you need to tell them it's a really, really a, a powerful time of prayer and um, just worship and all of that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get into the word of God today. I think I've made all the huge announcements. If you're new to church and you're wondering, okay, I've just said coming to harvest, this, what else should I do? Um, every Sunday after the service, we always have what we call growth track. Growth track is an opportunity for you to grow. You know, it, it's, it's a class designed for you to meet people in church, get to be prayed over, register for baptism. Like next week, Sunday now, I don't know if you're aware, it's our dedication Sunday. So if you have a baby, you got married, that's the Sunday in the fourth service. We don't do it in every service because it will be too long. If you do that in every service, so in the fourth service, all of you that have gotten married this year, not on a Thanksgiving, you've hit a good milestone in your age, you've not done it, you've had a baby, you know, you bought a house, you did something, next Sunday is Thanksgiving, make sure you find yourself and let's be here in the fourth service, you have to register for that online. All right, praise the Lord. No, 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 don't do that, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's, let, let's go. Uh, um, whew, are we ready? This series has been extremely powerful. Yeah, this series has been extremely powerful. I particularly love this series because it would answer a lot of the questions that we have. Yeah, when we teach about the believer's authority, the reason why is that, you know, oh wow, just a lot of questions. Some people always say that, why does bad thing happen? Is it that God is not kind? Sometimes someone that you really love, that is a good person, dies. And you say, why did God allow him to die? This series is going to answer that question. Sometimes you understand how come a born-again Christian can have demonic problems. And despite all their prayer, it's not been solved. Glory to God. The first thing I want to talk about today is from Exodus chapter 17. And I want to just show you a particular concept. And the concept is the fact that life is spiritual. Life is what? Spiritual. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 9. Exodus chapter 17 in verse 9. You need to jump quickly because I have a lot of scriptures to read. Exodus chapter 17 verse 9. The Bible says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go and fight the Amalekites. And go and fight Amalek tomorrow. And I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hands. Now I want to see a very powerful concept here. All of you that do businesses, listen to this. All of you that pray for something, listen to this. Moses said, we're believing for a breakthrough. 
But there's something we must do. We must do two things. Number one, Joshua, go out and pick men and fight. That is what you must do in the natural. He says, but as you pick men and fight, Moses said, I will be on the mount with the rod of God in intercession. He was saying that as you do the physical thing, he says, I will be in the realm of the spirit, influencing the physical result from the spirit. The challenge with Christians is this. This is what we are. Depend on your orientation. Most Christians want to do the physical thing without doing what? The spiritual thing. And some people want to do the spiritual thing without doing what? The physical thing. So I'll give an example. So someone is praying for funding. It goes into the spirit. Once you are done praying, then you go back to the physical. And go and get Bible and paper. And say, what do I have to do to get this funding? Glory to God. I said glory to God. A guy is praying for someone to get married to him. Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Once you finish praying, when you come to church, you open your eyes. You look to your right and to your left. Which one is the Lord saying here? Glory to God. Many of you here are praying for business expansion. You know, just to attend the business association course is a problem. And you don't know that expansion is a function of knowledge, of mindset, and, you know, of network. So Moses said this. Moses said, Moses said this. He says, go and pick up. He says, go and get a good team. He said, go and get a good team of people that would do something. He said, go and get a good team. See what he says. He said, choose, ye, um, he said, choose us out men and go and fight the Amalekite tomorrow. He says, I will stand upon the top of the mountain. So God is not against strategy. If you are in business, you need to have clear strategy. You, this is what this also says. Someone says, strategize as if you will never pray. Then pray as if you have no strategy. He says, strategize as if you don't know prayer. Then pray as if you have no strategy. That's the balance. Look at what happened in verse 11. So there were two components. Someone did something physical. And this is very powerful. This is very powerful. You know, you are praying about your approval and all of those things. The question is that, have you gotten the best people to work on that approval with you? Prayer is not an excuse for bad results. Prayer is not an excuse for bad strategies. So let's look at the next line. Verse 11. I'm going to jump quickly because of time. The Bible says this. Let's read together just to make sure you are there. Want to go? Look into your Bible. The screen may not be on today. Look into your Bible. Bring out your phones. That's why I want to look into your Bible. Look into your Bible. Are you there? All right. Want to go? And it came to pass when Moses held up his uh, uh, some are not reading. If you don't have a Bible, tap your name and say, you can use my own. You can use my own. You can use my own. Yeah. Exodus chapter 17 verse 11. Exodus chapter 17 verse 11. I have a wonderful Bible. The gift of God. We shall travel together. My Praise the Lord. Okay, verse 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Moses. Hold on. I want to ask you this. Listen to me. If you're not a believer, this sounds crazy. And I understand how you feel. The Bible says Moses was on top of some mountain. But as long as Moses held up his hands in intercession, the Bible says what happened. The Israel will prevail. The, the message translation said, as soon as Moses lifted up his hands, that Israel found themselves winning. That's what the message translation says. But when Moses did not do what is spiritual, then Israel began to lose. So, it almost seemed to me that this life is very spiritual influence is strong. It can influence things in the physical. This was spiritual influence. Okay, can I get the car? Yeah, you need to be fast with it. You know, this was spiritually first look at. I, I want to show you what spiritual influence really looks like today. And, and this would really, really bless you. The Bible says, when Moses, when Moses did what? When Moses, look at me everyone. When Moses lifted up his hands, what happened? When he lifted up his hands, they, they far moved faster. When he lifted up his hands, they far did not move. 
Glory to God. This is really good. Please bring your attention to this car. Hallelujah. Exactly. So this is your life. This is very cool. Let me show you the power of the Spirit. Can you go forward right now? Are we good? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That car is going forward. Stop. This is spiritual. The spiritual is remote control function. You don't have to touch it. From where you, I don't know where you're going to, you need to stand with me. From where you are with the remote, from where you are with the remote, you can in first bring back the casa. Some people, this is how their marriage has been brought backwards. Stop. And this what the Bible, this is spiritual. This, this, this is the influence of the spiritual. Most people, when they can't bring it forward, so what they want to use is you use their hand to stop the car. But the force that is pulling the car forward is beyond them. So even with them and them, they find themselves going backward because life is spiritual. Some of you, this is your marriage. You need the remote to move it forward. Some of you, this is your approval. You need the remote to move it forward. The question is this. The question is this. Do you have the remote? Do you have know how to use it to move your life forward? So many people are here. They are trying to push their life. <laughs> That's not how we do it. We're influencing from the realm of the spirit. Some people are here. They are trying to push their file. We're influenced from the realm of the spirit. Every time I gather in the next level in the morning, what are we doing? We're releasing the influence. And, and you know the thing? This song says, why do you pray continuously? This is why you pray continuously. Bring back the car. Bring back the car. Bring it back. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. No, don't take it forward. Just bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? When you start praying, look at it. It's going forward. You know what that means? This is what I want to show you. Sometimes when you pray, the change does not happen at once. And if it does not happen, it does not mean it's not working. It just means that it's work in progress. I have something in my office. It's called BIP. It's a sticker, actually. It's like a, it, I don't know what, some, it's a book liner. It's called Breakthrough in Progress. Sometimes when you think your prayer is not working, it's working. It's just called what? Breakthrough in Progress. So someone says, my prayer is not working. Don't speak like that. Say, it's Breakthrough in Progress. Because look at this car right now. This is the point of breakthrough. He has left where it was. Boy, is he here right now? No. Because it's still breakthrough in progress. If I can keep pushing, the car will get to where it needs to get to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a good opportunity to clap somebody. So the question I want to ask you today is this. What do you need to move in your life? That's why you need to understand the believer's authority. The reason why is that with the authority, you can move things. Things are not... See, things may look natural. Let me give you some examples. So I'm talking about how life is spiritual. You know, I... I, I, I <laughs> there was a... I, I will never forget this. That, that there was a lady... I, I will never forget in my life. I was a younger pastor. And um, she... she her stomach just began to grow big. But the challenge was that she went to seven hospitals and they kept on referring her from one hospital to the other hospital to the other hospital. And guess what they found out? Nobody knew why her stomach was going big. It was not a fibroid. Her stomach just began to grow big. And for one year, she began to go from hospital to hospital. They couldn't treat her because they didn't know what it was. They eventually brought her to me. And you know, when I saw her, I just said, you are affliction of the devil, you must come out of her body. I said, out in Jesus' name. The next, I think I prayed for her on a Sunday. The next morning, she had an appointment with another doctor. For the first time, they saw what was wrong. Why couldn't they see it for the last one year? When a problem is covered at spiritual needle and such a cartilage cannot fix it. Let me tell you something. If you're delayed on the spiritual realm, there's no way you can go to, you can get help. Because spiritual help must be solved for spiritual problems. Spiritual problems must be solved for spiritual problems. That's why when they say that there's a problem with, when they say there's a problem with someone in our country, they say maybe he was arrested for fraud. They will say, is it 
a financial problem or is a political problem? You know why? If it's a political problem, if the person lies, if he tenders all the papers that shows that he is clean, he will still go to jail. Because the problems, the root of the problem is not economical or financial. The root of the problem is what? It's political. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The spiritual realm is very real. When you read in the Bible, you read of a woman called Rahab. I don't know if you know her story. When the walls of Jericho was going to come down, the Bible says that as soon as Israel would shout, he said the city will be cursed. But Rahab, because she helped the Jews, they told her that put a red rope outside your fence. He said, put a red rope outside your fence. As soon as they shouted, everything in the city began to crumble. What did crumble? The house of Rahab. The reason why was that because the red rope was the red rope. The red rope was referring to the blood of Jesus. The finished work of Calvary. That as long as you stay in the life of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. The red rope, it's, it's not about, you know, well, one of the days I will have the opportunity to talk about the blood of Jesus because a lot of people say the wrong way. You know, it's almost as if we think it's a paint, like you say, just come the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is really a metaphor. And that's why, if you see throughout the New Testament, there's no place the apostles or Jesus himself ever said the blood of Jesus. But so powerful. How does a red robe preserve a whole house? The influence of the Spirit. Jesus Christ went to Peter. Peter had fished all night. If you know any about fishing, when I was young, I tried to learn fishing. I had a cousin that was good at fishing. And one of the things we used to do is that if you had to go and fish, you had to go very early in the morning or what? Early in the evening. And I said, why? He said, because that's when the fish cannot see the bait. They can't see the movement and they can easily eat. You know, that's what I was told. I mean, I hope that's true. That's what I was told. So that explained to us why Peter fished what? All night. Because that's the time, that's the best catching season for fish. And it caught nothing. Then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ finished teaching in the broad daylight. And Jesus Christ said, cast your net into the deep for a catch. And Peter said, sir, you are a preacher. I am a fisherman. There's no more fish here. By what I know. He said, not just that. We fished last night and we didn't find fish here. And Peter reluctantly, just kind of said, cast your nets. Because reluctantly took one net. And put it in, in there. And fish gathered. Question, where did the fish come from? The fish came because the spirit realm, the spirit realm had influenced them. Where there was no contract. When you release the force of the spirit, it will be as if they just noticed you. Let, let me tell you something. Eh? Spiritual force is powerful. Oh. <laughs> if you do Gen Z, I don't understand the spirit. You're under influence already. Oh. I'm telling you, I don't believe in demon. That statement shows you're under demonic influence. Eh, because what you've, you've, you've been... Anybody that said, I don't believe in devils, it already shows you're under demonic influence. Because... It is a function of the seducing spirits. It's a function, and that's how they destroy people. Why? I want to ask you, you think God is going to do Yahoo Plus and blood money? You think people just disappear? I mean, in, 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 oh, this is a very terrible story. We have a neighbor in Bagada, and he just came to see me and said, he's not been okay. I said, what happened? He said, my son went to school six months ago. He was on his way back from school three months ago. We've not seen him since then. He said, he told us when he was coming back home, that's coming back home. He says, we've not seen him. And this is about maybe eight years after. They've not seen him. I, I saw the mother of the boy age in front of me. And most of the time, those boys are kidnapped and used for ritual rituals. You think if there was nothing in the realm of the spirit, people would not in, people would engage that? When you see all this young girls doing ayatanga, or oh, what? What? What do we call katanga? What? Kayamata. Kayata. It even sounds very demonic. Like Kayata. It's not a joke. <laughs> oh, somebody say hallelujah. Let me show you one scripture. Second Kings chapter 3. Let me show you one scripture. Because the spiritual has influence over the natural. That's what I'm going to. The spiritual, 2 Kings chapter 3. The spiritual has influence. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 26. Let me show you something quickly. Hmm. 
And when I say spiritual has influence, you always think that, you know, that, you know, it will be someone wearing red and white and saying that, hey, chinedu, achuma, achuma, achuma. No, see, that can happen, but that's just one side of the spiritual. Sometimes the spiritual is not as dramatic as you think. It's not as dramatic as you think. Some of you, if you're not careful, your husband is under an influence. You just don't know. Someone says, is it possible? Ask Peter. Peter said to Jesus Christ, you, and Jesus Christ looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter as a Satan, but in the moment, the influence of the devil was speaking through him. That's why he must be careful who you take advice from. Because in the moment, the influence of the devil can take, can take them over and they begin to say something. And you, and you hmm, see wisdom, see wisdom. That's why I love the prayer passage you led. He says, may wisdom not look like foolishness to me. May foolishness not look like wisdom to me. It's a, it's a prayer you must pray for yourself. Oh. That Lord, as I make decisions, may foolishness, ah, may foolishness not look like wisdom to me. You know why? When people choose foolishness, initially it tastes and looks and feels like wisdom. Until they lose the money. Glory to God. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 26. Someone say Hallelujah. Let's read together. The Bible says, let's can we read together. Want to go? And the king of Mobile saw that the battle was too sore or intense for him. He took with him 700 men that drew sword to break through even to the king of Edom, but they could not. The king of Moab was an idol worshiper. See, so when he did everything and he could not, look at verse 27. The Bible says, and he took his eldest son. That's the, the person. That's what they call heir apparent. It should be the king after him. That should have reigned in his stead. And offered him. He took his child. And offered him for a, a bunch of things. What was he trying to do? He was trying to invoke diabolical powers. He was trying to invoke diabolical strongholds. He was trying to invoke the nomads. The exousias of the demonic world to come to his help. Did they come? See. The Bible says. And as soon as he did that, there arose indignation against Israel. He said something rose against the enemy. There are things you do that scatters everything. There are things you do that arrange everything. That's why this month as we talk about the issue of authority, I'm just showing you how powerful the spiritual realm is. That even fish can respond to spiritual realm. Fish. Battle responded to the realm of the spirit. These are demonic powers. Oh. Glory to God. It takes authority to influence things in your favor. No wonder Hebrew says this. It says through faith we understand that the things we see are not made of the things we do not see. That the things we see are created, sustained, influenced, produced by the things we do not see. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So what am I teaching us? What I'm teaching us is that, like that car was moving, how you can understand, I'm telling you, how you can understand, how you can influence things in the realm of the spirit. It, it doesn't, someone says, but I'm not a pastor. This is not about pastoring. This is not about pastoring. If you not, let me tell you something. If you don't know the, uh, your authority in Christ, Satan will cheat you big time. Did you notice in the Bible? The Bible let me show you something. <laughs> Someone say hallelujah. Act to the apostles. This is even, I didn't even tend to show you this, but that means it came out of my spirit. And there must be a reason why it came out of my spirit. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Act chapter 9, verse 1. Yeah. Act 9, verse 1, then Act 12, verse 1. We'll take it one by one. The Bible says this. And Saul was yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord and went unto the high priest. 
this thing he was doing was an influence of demonic spirits. I'm just showing you that, you know, you, the Bible says he was just angry at Christians. That thing he was, look at chapter 12. Influenced by the Holy Spirit. This is a clear case. You know what I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you what, how the influence is sought to. How the influence is what sought to. Chapter 12 verse 1. Because the way Hollywood paints it, it's not accurate. But you must remember, holy people are those in the Bible. It's just for fiction. It's just like, what will make you laugh? Hebrews 12 verse 1. See, what about, what about, let's read. Want to go? Now about this time, Herod what? Herod the king what? To do what? Why? He just picked up fire. Not that the church did anything wrong, bro. He said, Herod the king just stretched forth his hand to vex the church. That vex the church. You know he killed James. You know who James is? James was what the Bible called the son of Bo- Bohannas. Sons of thunder. These were people that walked with Jesus Christ. Just because he was hungry, he killed James. I wish he stopped there. Do you know after he killed James, what did he do? He went for Peter. Why was he going for James and Peter? The Bible says there were three pillars in the church. Who were they? Peter, James, and John. Listen to the As he went for James, no resistance. He took, he took one pillar, no resistance. He went for another pillar. Don't worry. She didn't kill one business. You didn't pray. He's coming for the next one. Because the work of Satan is this. It does not stop until everything is over. He went. He took James. You know, people, you know, I always think that, huh? Why didn't the brethren pray when James was arrested? Maybe they were like, all of us here, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Pastor B is arrested. Ah, uh, God will deliver him. Ah, uh, God will deliver him. Ah, uh, you. But eventually he died. But when he took Peter, then the church arose in authority. The church arose. The Bible says, the prayers were made without ceasing. What was the difference? Why was Peter released? And James, why did he die? Because when Peter, when Peter was arrested, the church arose in prayer. They took their authority. In fact, when Peter was released, he came to a place where they were still praying for his release. Keep saying, whatever will be, will be. You will see a lot of things go wrong. January, your sales went down. February, it went down. March, it went down. You say, it's a change of transition. Don't worry. You will soon see a change of new government. Are you here? Let me say something to you quickly. The influence of Satan can be so subtle that you think it's normal. Meanwhile, it's big. The extreme is where you become so conscious. That's not what I want it to be. Where I want it to be is that you can take authority. The Bible says they stopped her. Shabbat. The Bible says the same day Peter would have been taken out of prison to be judged by Herod. The same day an angel came. Why did an angel came? Because believers took authority. You give me that picture. The believers took authority. Lift up your hands and just say thank you, Jesus. Say, I take my authority in Christ. Say, I take my authority in Christ. Say, I tell of your life. Write in the comments and say, I take my authority in Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hold this picture for me. Many of you may not know this man. But his name is Apostle Ayo Babalola. He was the founder of CAC. I know that a lot of you know foreign preachers. But you need to know that there were African fathers that had raw apostolic power. All of you from Ekiti know this man. Do you know him? He, He shook it so much that States and region knew him. When he got born again, I was full of power of the Holy Ghost. He went into a kitty and wanted to wanted to a land to build a church. Of course, the, the royal father of Ekiti was very angry because people were converting to Christianity. So they said they will give him something that will kill him. So they said, You want to build a church? Build it in that place. He did not realize that that was forbidden forest. It was a forest that was dedicated to an idol. And nobody has ever entered and come out. Eventually, when he got to know, he said, it makes no difference. I'm going to go there and build the church and enter the place of the demonic power. Everybody was crying. He will not go. 
he took his bell, he used to use a bell for prayer, entered into the place. Story says that I think there was a snake or something like that that confronted him. You know, you know, and the snake wound, it was a big snake they used to worship. I hope I have the story right. What around him? Because it was like a part of strangled. That's how you used to kill everybody. And they would, once they see the snake, the power will paralyze them. And as he wrapped around him, he didn't even struggle. The snake wrapped around him. And he's about to stretch. He said, touch not my anointed and do my breath no sound. The big snake unwound himself around him. Went some few miles and caught fire and burnt. Till today, in that place, that place became a church. And it was so powerful to show that this is not um, like all these stories of, they say, in Ekiti, there's, the Ekiti people need to help me now. They say something like, the king was so changed that is a title of the Ekiti king that, um, that um, he left the house of witches and wizards and became a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, who, knows, who knows it in your revival? I don't know. Who, who knows that? There's a saying. It's a saying. The Ekiti people no. What? What? They are not interested. I'm trying to remember because it's, it's a powerful story. It's a powerful story. Thank you. In, in England, there, there, there was a man called John Knox. The Queen of England said this. Queen Elizabeth, the first Queen Elizabeth. He said, I'm afraid of the prayer of John Knox that 1,000 armed British soldiers. He said, because I've seen the result of his prayers before. It's this, the question we want to ask today is this. What did these people have that we do not have? See, because they have the same name of Jesus, yes or no? They have the same Holy Ghost, yes or no? So, what is wrong with us? How daddy your house up that is 10 years old, say she's, she's my mother's spirit. The man, you, that you're 54 as a man, you prostrate and say, my mother, I, I beg you, just live in peace. What did they have? They threatened a Christian in the office. He said, Pastor, what they said is happening. I'm using the toilet for 25 times in a day. I'm, what did they have? How come the apostolic father was so bold in their faith? They exercised so much authority. What did they have? What they knew was the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're teaching you today. What they knew was the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. See, when you need authority, you don't stress. Oh. When you see, let me tell you, when you see someone was cast a demon and they now start sweating, go. I will not go. Just know that there's a problem. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So the first question, does Satan have power? Tell me. Give me a microphone. Does Satan have power? Yes or no? Give me a microphone. Don't sit down for her. Give it to her nomsy friend. She said he has power. Yeah, give it to her. Don't sit down for power. He does. How do you know that? Has he used it on you before? Or you've seen his power? <laughs> or are you a partner in the powers? Yeah. How, how do you know? Well, from what you said. From what I've said. Yeah. What did I say? Uh, we can't just be aloof to have to believe that uh, this Satan, oh, I've said God has power oh. yeah, Jesus has power oh. okay yeah. great, thank you a another person, does Satan has power, yes or no another person, that wants to tell me uh, yeah, G give it to Brother Ladi, will you? Yeah, give it to him, does Satan has power yeah. I think he does you think he does, yeah. okay well, let me help you here when a Christian has a, a, a subject of the Bible it's not okay for you to, you to say that um, I think so Yes or no? It's good to go back to the word of God and say, the reason why I believe this is because the Bible said so. So Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Yeah, Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. If he has power, what does he use his power to do? If he has power, what does he use this teaching is getting deep old. If he has power, what does he use his power to do? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Are you there somebody? Okay. What does it say? Want to go? Behold, I give what? It says, I give unto you power to tread upon what? Serpent and scorpion. Hold on. 
Don't just read like that. You need to ask yourself, what are serpents and scorpions? The next line tells you what serpents and scorpions are. There's a rule in the Bible interpretation. Is the word is a rule of Kai. Kai means sometimes when you see an following a proper noun, it means it's an expansion of the original thought. Is the root Kai in the Greek? He says this. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. What are serpents and scorpions? See the word Kai and there is the word Kai explaining what serpents and scorpions are. What are they? And over all what the power. Wow. So, the Bible declares that Satan has power. Someone says, yes, 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 yes. He had power before Jesus Christ came. But after Jesus Christ came, all his power was taken. Let's look at the Bible. Is that true? Let's look at the Bible. 2 Corinthians, quickly, chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4. Luke, chapter 4, verse 5. I want us to jump quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Then Luke chapter 4 verse 5. Does Satan have power? And I want to show you. Today I want to answer one big question. Why do bad things happen to good people and bad people? Look what the Bible says here. Want to go. Want to go. In whom the God. What was the God of this world? The power. The power. The God. For him to be a God, he must have power. A womb, the God of this world, has blinded the heart. Question, was this before Jesus Christ died or after he died? This is after he died because in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. So it was in what? In the present. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 4, rather, verse 5. Luke chapter 4, verse 5. Does Satan have power? Let's look at it. You know how people rebuke the devil? People say that they, God forbid. Let me just tell you, this has no spiritual significance to whatever you are doing. If you like, snap three times. If you like, snap four times. This has no, people that have power don't snap. Power is in spoken words. Let's say, God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. What, what does this mean with spiritual power? T- t- you will use two fingers. I, I reject it. You reject it like this. Did your master reject it like this? We reject my spoken words. See what the Bible says here. And Satan, taking him into a mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment. Take note of the world, the kingdoms of the world. Next verse. Next verse, quickly. Next verse. And the devil said to Jesus Christ, what did he say? Want to go? Does Satan have power? Wow. Take note. See, he says, all those powers was given unto me and the glory of them. Take note, verse 5 says, he showed them all the kingdoms of the world. What did he show him? He showed him, in a moment, he showed him the economy. He showed him the sports. He showed him the politics. And when he showed him the system, because it was spiritual, he could see the satanic power influencing the system. For example, there's a spirit called the spirit of mammon. It's a, it's a demon that controls money. And it has one of, two objectives, to make sure that Christians don't get it. Because if they get it, they will sponsor the gospel. Then two, to make sure that those that get it are worshiping Satan. So when someone says, I did money ritual, let me tell you what happened. It's a corporation. It's a, how does money ritual work? If it really works, it's a corporation. This is how it works. The money was already held back by Satan to make your life difficult. So when you now appease the evil spirit, he only releases his hold on it. For example, have you had a hold on your money in the bank before? Yes or no? They say, um, they say, hold on your money. It's your money, but you cannot access it. When the bank releases it, they give you money. No, they just remove the hold on it. The work of the spirit of mammon is that they hold money. So once you become a subject, they now release their hold, which was what Jesus was trying to do with Jesus Christ. He said, if you worship me, I will what? I will give you. He says, I will release the hold. Don't say Satan gave me child. Satan cannot give child. Where does he see it? Monkey, the bomb, banana. Who give monkey banana? Ah, no child. He's the one that held the child before. He just he, that's why you sacrifice to appease. The appease means the anger they have that made them hold the thing before. Let them release it. Are you getting it? See what he says. He says. All this power is given unto me. We're going to go maybe in the next service or next week. What, when, 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 who gave it to him? But I wanted to establish you that Satan has power and authority. Number one, where did he get authority from? Number one, he got it from Adam. 
Where did he get power from? Remember, he's an angel himself. So he has angelic power. What's the difference between authority and power? I'll give an example. Authority talks about authority. Um, authority. The, is there is there anybody with a badge here? Maybe it, it, some of the some on the car park department. You have that thing you used to wear that vest. So authority talks about delegated power. The word authority is the word exousia. Yeah, that's what authority is. Authority talks about a right. Yeah. A right. That's what authority is. So, but the qu- next question, what is power? Power, the Greek word power is dunamis. It means the ability to do. So, dunamis is where we get the word dynamite from. So, when you see a bomb, a bomb does not need anything to cause trouble. Once you detonate a bomb by itself, it causes trouble. That's dunamis. So, there's authority and there's power. Okay. Let's Let's uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? The Bible says this. I wanted to see verse 5. I wanted to see it very well. Because you want to see what the influence of the devil does. So that the reason why is that if you see what the influence of the devil does, you will understand why we need authority as a believer. See what it says. Verse 5. And the devil took him into a high mountain and showed him in a moment all what? The kingdoms of this world. One. The devil has the kingdoms. Verse 6 now says, it says, all this power and the glory will I give to you. Yes or no? There are three words that are very symbolic here. Bible scholars. He said kingdom. He said power. He said glory. Someone had said those words also in the Bible. Who remembers Who remembers? Who remembers those words, kingdom, power, and glory? Matthew chapter 6 in the Lord's Prayer. What did he say? He said, give us this at the For thine, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. So Satan and God are competing for kingdom, power, and glory. What did Matthew 6 say? It says, the kingdom and the power and the glory belongs to God. No wonder I was praying, let your will be done on earth. Because why was he saying that it will be done on earth? Because if the will of God is done on earth, it will not be a prayer. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So his will is not always done on earth. The sickly children is not the will of God. So says, so why do bad things happen in this world? We read it already. Second Corinthians 4 4. The God of this world. If it's the God of this world, he will rule this world. The nature of the God of this world shows up in the world. So it's nature of sickness, shame, anger, delay. Everything shows. So the reason why the world is in chaos is because Satan is what? The God of this world. So why is that important to us? If we understand that he's the God of this world, our job is now that in this world to establish his kingdom, his power, and what? His glory. And he's not going to sit down and watch you. That's why we need authority and power to establish over the kingdom of darkness his kingdom, his power, and his glory. Glory to God. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Sometimes you see a man just one week after the marriage just die. That's not the will of God. It's the work of the God of this world. That's what the Bible says. The God of this world. One time I was in the service and there was a word of knowledge. They said there are people that feel like eating human flesh. Those kind of abnormal cravings are the God of this world. It's the influence. People feel like sleeping with animals. Have you not heard or seen that before? People feel like sleeping with animals. It's the work. It's the influence of the God of this world. Look, go back to look at what it says. He says, in whom the God of this world, how does it work? He says, has blinded their mind. It walks through the mind. It comes at a thought. It comes as an emotion. You will just see yourself depressed. You don't know the God of this world has sat on your mind. Nothing, no, nothing made you depressed. Though. You will just be moody. You've come under the influence. Have you not seen people? They say they are cryptomaniac. You know cryptomaniac? People that have the disorder of stealing. They steal by default. The God of this world. How can you? Because 
The devil is a thief. He lives inside. So he will be making you steal. The devil's thief. One they steal, some of them have the money to buy it, but they prefer to steal it. The God of this world. Look at the Bible in the book of Daniel. The Bible says Daniel prayed. The Bible says Daniel prayed that the prince of passion, a demonic spirit, came to stop the prayer. The God of this world. Remember, he says the kingdoms belong to him. The business kingdom is his own. So if you're not careful as a businessman, you will find yourself hustling in business, hustling in business, because there's a resistance. There's a resistance. Even as a minister, you will find yourself pushing the ministry. There's a resistance, but thank God. Philip chapter 2, verse 9. He has given us a name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Of those in the earth, under the earth, and in heaven. Somebody say hallelujah. He has given us a name. He gave us the authority because he knows we will need it. That's why he gave us the authority. He loaded us with power. He gave us authority. He said, go in my name. When you enter that, before you go for the business meeting, I bring everybody here under the influence of the Spirit. I bring them under the influence of the Spirit. The ones that will touch my father, I bring them under the influence of the Spirit. The major problem is this. When a Christian begins to beg, a demon will not respond. Demons respond to authority, not begging. Oh, glory to God. Do you have some more time? Wow. The work of evil spirits, you see them. Luke 16, 16 speaks about the spirit of divination. What is the spirit of divination? These are spirits that are not tomorrow. Some of you, some of you, if you're not careful, your parents or your friends will contact you and say you should go and see somebody that has a spirit. That's all those habits. They have the spirit of divination. All those psychic, they walk with the spirit of divination. See what the Bible says here. No, Acts 16, 16. Spirit of divination. It was a young girl. In fact, these ones, they, they, they began to work on Google. They put it adverts on Google. See what the Bible says. Acts 16, 16. The Bible says this lady had the spirit of, it came to pass and went to pray. A certain damsel possessed. She was hot. Beautiful. That's why all these men are looking for, you know, you will look for color, tone, skin, color. You will just carry something that is not your own. He said, possessed with a spirit of divination. How did they know? The only reason why they knew was not because she knew. It was because Paul could see to the spirit. But she was possessed. And see, and brought her master's much gain. She brought money. So all this, Kayata, Koyoto, is not new. Where they use the money powers and they package it and bring themselves money. Look at the Bible. <laughs> Are you here? Look at eight, um, so many examples. Look at Luke 13, 16. A woman was sick. Jesus Christ said, this person that Satan has bound. Just not say that it was an infection or a virus. Let me show you what it said. I, I want to slow down. I, I, I want to slow down because I don't want to be in a hurry. I, I'm going to close now. Luke 13, verse 16. Luke 13, verse 16. I'm just showing the influence of demonic spirit. I showed in the life of Herod how Herod just got angry. I showed it with Peter. How Peter just gave an advice that will lead Jesus Christ into error. Look at this one. The Bible says, Of not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, read the next time. Who what? The, the woman was sick, but see how Jesus Christ described the sickness. He says, This sickness is a bondage of Satan. That's why all these years, 18 years, nobody could treat her and heal her because it was bound. Let me close. Second, oh glory to God. Second, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. Oh, so that we can close. Ooh, glory to God. You know what I'm saying this thing so far? If you feel scared of the devil, you need to get born again. Because if you're born again, you're superior to him. Second, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. But this, this is why you now appreciate our authority in Christ. This is how you appreciate how we pray next level. We don't say, ah. Lord, no, 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 no. This is how we pray. The fact, see, see, see. So Satan has power, but see what Jesus Christ did. Bible says, and being in, being, being, 
being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death. Why did he die? Even the death of the cross. Verse 9. Let's keep. Why did he die? Verse 9. Hallelujah. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him ha, and given him a name above every other name. Name means authority. Hallelujah. He says, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name. It doesn't matter what they call him. Our name is above every other name. What does it mean? Look at the next thing. That at the name of Jesus, every knee, hallelujah, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Are you hearing me, somebody? He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say you have delayed your family. Say that's okay, Daddy. I've come in the name of Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say that guy in NNPC uses jazz. He said that's okay. I've come in a big name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say your child has a certain sickness. He said that's fine. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. They say some trouble is wrong. He will not get married. You say I have authority. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. If you believe, shout amen. Stand up and exercise your authority. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Speak into it in your business. Speak into it in your family. That death must stop. Oh, glory to God. Oh, pan sholekete. Let me the kuli sambaladaya. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. The tomb must bow. The five rod must bow. The marital delay must bow. The opposition against the work of the ministry. It must bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Oh, glory to God. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Oh, glory to God. We come against the influence of Satan all around the world. We We contain the activities of darkness against the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I must shut up a cobra. Leave all of our shut up. He must talk over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who? Father, we thank you. Shola Badi Hatis. We give you praise. Everyone that you've been having things you cannot explain. You have authority. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Everyone that's been plagued with something that's of the devil. I take authority right now. I command it to bow in the name of Jesus. I declare your freedom from those affliction and oppression in your body, in your finance, in your health. It's gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you can have your seat. Oh! At the name of Jesus, every knee. Ah, I, I needed to go and watch this online. Tell your friends to watch it. Your mom needs to watch it. You know she always pray fire prayer. Tell her to pray authority prayer. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Glory to God. Are we to give our tithes and offerings today? Let's go ahead and give. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Are we ready to give? Let's go ahead and give. Even your giving is spiritual. We said it. Life is spiritual. Your giving is spiritual. If a titan, will you stand on your feet? as our culture is. And many of you can participate in our building project. You can also give to the NLP conference that is coming up in the UK. Hallelujah. All right. So if a titan, will you stand on your feet? as our culture is right now. Just stand on your feet. Yeah. Go ahead. If a titan, just stand on your feet. as our culture is. If you give me your offering, raise up your offering. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus, we want to thank you because you are good and kind. And we're praying for everyone giving their tithes and offerings today. That your blessing will be upon them. That this seed is blessed and will cause expansion for everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. While you're doing that, if today happens to be your first... Okay, I used to give him. Please leave the giving to this there so we can have some food to give. While we're doing that, if today happens to be your first time in Harvesters, will you just 
Raise your right hand. Let's welcome you in Jesus' name. My first time. Is your friend's first time? Welcome. Welcome. Wave your right hands. My first time in Harvesters. My first time. Oh, over there. Oh, really good. Really good. Please keep. Oh, thank you so much, man. God bless you, man. God bless you. The ushers will give you a card. Please fill the cards. Write a prayer request we can pray with you on. Write something we can pray with you on. Glory and glory and glory and glory and glory. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Hi, your wife? I've missed you. I've not seen you in such a long time. Are you okay? I always tell your husband to say hi, but I'm not sure if he does to tell you hi. He does. Okay, great. Praise God. Peter's acceleration course, you want to register right now. The stand is outside. Register, get your discount. It will really help. Let's start on our feet and begin to bring the service to a close. Were you blessed today? Leave a, state, leave, leave, leave a comment on, on Facebook, on Twitter, Twitter at PB Speaks, hashtag on Facebook, on Instagram. Let me see. And next week, Sunday is Father's Day. Can I have the card? Yeah, next Sunday is Father's Day. So we want to be a blessing to all the fathers. Bring all the fathers. This is an invitation. Bring all the fathers and all the men in your life. We want to be a blessing to them. Father's Day service. Amen. All your friends that don't come to church, all the fathers, just bring them this Sunday. Amen. And we're having special seats for them. Amen. And surely... ones on whose backs we ride and on whose wisdom we thrive.